Hello, this is Katie O'Regan. I'm the artistic director for the Spring Grove International Film Festival. We had our premiere festival this year, and we are here today for Featured Friday Filmmakers with a very, very wonderful cast and crew of our award-winning dance film from our festival. Not only did this film, Cacophony, a short film, win the best dance film in the entire festival, it also won the Best Director Award of Dance by Joe Koala. And I would like to introduce to you right now. Joe, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, nice to have you. Thank you. How's everything in Minneapolis? Well, it's snowing, it's really pretty, but I didn't really want this until December, but it's very pretty, but it's, uh, it's snowing. Again, right. we've already got about four inches and then today we'll get some more. Uh, well, great. Well, we're happy to have you here for sure. Thank you. So, Joe, tell us about your tell us about your film. Give us a synopsis. Okay. Of your short award-winning film. Well, um, just a little background. <laughs> Cacophony um, is based on a stage uh, piece that we created that we created for the Flying Foot Forum. Um, it comes out of um, a, a, a full evening piece that we premiered at the Guthrie and uh 19 what was 2007. it 2007 2007 thank you uh 2007 at the guthrie and um i uh uh asked peter to collaborate with me to create a uh a kitchen piece where we drum on on um pots and pans and so in that piece peter and i do a, a percussive dance duet a body percussion duet and at the end he accidentally slaps me and um we're out on the street in paris and then uh, and then we, uh, I chase him and he goes into this kitchen and hides as a chef. And that's how this piece started in the original. Then we put it into a, 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 a um, full evening of just percussive dances that Carla, Peter and I created together. And um, that piece was called The Percussion Project and that has played all over the place. Um, so, and we still um, tour bits and pieces of that piece uh, to, to this day. But then, you know, at some point I thought, well, you know, you do this and then it's gone. So let's make a, let's make a film. So I talked to Steve, um, our cinematographer, Steve, who, um, who I had collaborated with many times for our stage works and said, uh, what do you think of making uh, some films of some of the pieces that we've done over the years? And he liked the idea, so we made um, cacophony and we're working on a bunch of others too but um, but but this was our first one that we've um, created and sent to film festivals so the story is this story in the film um, you see these two guys Peter and um, and Galen uh, Higgins um, uh, Peter finds Galen passed out on the rocks for some reason and tries to revive him and realizes that his body makes a really good drum. So he starts drumming on him and Galen wakes up and chases him, chases him out past the, um, uh, uh, what's that lighthouse called? The um, Split Rock. No, no, no. Uh, oh. Lake, Lake, Oh, it's the, the one in Duluth, um, pa past the lighthouse in Duluth. Uh, and there's a wedding party there waiting for food and, and they're really bored and, and uh, hungry. So he, uh, Galen chases Peter into the lighthouse. Uh, Peter goes down to the depths of the lighthouse and uh, hides as a chef. The, uh, he, the, the chefs are, uh, Carla and uh, Charles are the chefs that are waiting for the substitute chef to come. So he comes and they think he's the substitute chef. And then they, they think he's gonna create I help them create a dinner and he ends up beating on the pots and pans and making a, a cacophony and then in the end they finally do make a dinner and they bring it out to the wedding party and everybody dances so that's the, the story that's a great synopsis i'd love to hear your perspective on it what the story is because as a viewer <clears throat> what you'll see if you see cacophony is you'll see this beautiful artistic piece of work that's a cross between in my humble estimation um, between a beautiful comedic foreign French film and uh, and Laurel and Hardy, and also this gorgeous mixture of, I would say, a very very subtle performance art ballet. That's so it's very nice. it's it, it's very it's very sophisticated in its comedy, and. Um, you're, you're humble when you tell the story because you're telling the plot, which I asked you to, so thank you. Um, but a viewer see, it's very musical. I, it's like, it's, 
I, when I first saw it, I always tell people, I, whenever I see a piece of art, I remember where I was, what time, it, what day it was, what I was wearing, how I was affected by it. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, I think I watched it five times when I saw it. Um, and I was sick of watching films by the time I saw this, dance films, because we had so many dance films that were entered into our competition at the Spring Girl Film Festival, and they were all really very good, but yours won. So, but what I saw was, not only the costumes were beautiful, the cinematography was great, the choreographer, the, the choreography was stellar, the performance, all the performances were all beautiful. So um, that's my that's my perspective and that's my pitch uh, for your film and for your art, just from a, a viewer's point of view. Um, so could you, Joe, could you introduce everybody that's here? Yes. Um, so I don't know where everybody is on the screen. So uh, the woman. <laughs> <laughs> is my long uh, collaborator and conspirator, uh, Carla Grotting. Uh, she was uh, one of the original uh, members of, Fly of Flying Foot Forum, founding member, and is now uh, artistic associate. And we've been dancing together for pretty much 30 years now, mm -hmm. uh, close to. And um, so that's Carla Grotting. Um, and uh, Peter O'Gorman um, in the red shirt, uh, is um, the composer uh, for Cacophony. He composed all of the, the drum riffs uh, and, and the drumming on the pots and pans. And uh, Steve Campbell is our uh, cinematographer. And also I, editor. And I don't see Steve. Steve, are we, let's see, even though I know you're here, Steve, can we, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna see if we can. I'm seeing Steve. Are you seeing Steve? I don't see Steve. Yeah, yeah. I am as well. Oh, good. Oh, interesting. Well, as long as you guys can see. Hi, Steve. Let's see. Hello. You. There you are. Gallery view. Oh, yeah, just pop up. Yep. Yeah, nice. Very good. So, um, Peter, the, the music is just, the, I was just thinking, because I watched it once again right before I, I wanted to talk to, uh, to uh, interview you for your award. Um, and I said, oh, my gosh, I could just listen to the music. I love, obviously, love the whole thing, but just the soundtrack is really lovely. Oh, thank you. Thank you much. It's true. It's lovely. It's very, it's, it's whimsical and, and beautiful and um, it's cheery as well. And we could use some cheer. Yeah. Yes, we I, can. I must, say, I must say too that Victor Soupbank wrote the, um, the songs at the beginning and the end. Victor Soupbank did the ones yeah. at the beginning, uh, the melodic music. Peter was the composer for the percussive music in, in the cool. piece. And then uh, actually Dan Chenard, um, didn't write the piece at the end, but he uh, he arranged it and put it together. It's a traditional Italian uh, piece that he he arranged. So on the the bookends, uh, the melodic music on the on the two ends of the actual kitchen part were uh, were composed by the, those two. So for those of you who haven't seen this, picture crazy chefs and dancers and being very 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 funny and dancing and gorgeous music and Italiano and like picture that. <laughs> Just picture it. You know, That's, it's very European, you know, kind of very European. To make it. Well, of course, we speak French in it. So, of course, you're going to. I know. That's what I was cracked up because you have this Italian music and they're just like having these like funny, funny French accents. Hilarious. Yeah. But like the wedding party, we tried to make it very sort of, you know, uh, I don't know, very uh, pan European. And, uh, you don't know exactly who is from where that that sort of thing. So we wanted to make it very, um, I don't know, uh, not, not anything specific too specific. And yeah, and you're working on another brand new piece, correct? Yes. Or pieces? Actually a number of them. Um, actually, I love the way Steve describes the split rock shuffle. Do you wanna, do you wanna talk about that? The, the way I describe a uh, split rock shuffle? Yeah. You may have to, you may have to, <laughs> well, it's like a, it's a tap battle that takes place underneath the split rock lighthouse on really jaggy rocks um, and uh, you know that was the that was the first piece, first piece we shot uh, back in we started in 2016 and uh, has evolved uh, it includes uh, you know some of the pieces that you actually see in cacophony um, but yeah it's pretty much a tap dance battle between a picnicker and a guy that emerges from the woods so yeah. it's um the, the little a guy that emerges from the woods yeah. I like it. Curious guy that moves <laughs> in the woods. He's quite comic. Anyway, but um, the one thing that uh, you know, if we're going to talk about these other films that uh, we're actually doing is creating. We're we're slowly creating a full length uh, 
feature film based on all of these little pieces that we're going to string together with a story. And so we started the very first thing that we filmed um, was uh, the split rock shuffle uh, dance battle between um, uh, Galen Higgins and Rush Benson. And we filmed that at Split Rock Lighthouse State Park. Um, and then shortly after that, we did the wedding uh, scene from Cacophony, which will be the, the sort of um, the glue between the, these two pieces. Okay. Um, and we've had to film alternate beginnings and endings for our, all of these films so that there's a, a, one that will connect it to the rest of the film and then one that um, will make it just the short film, which has been confusing and challenging, but also fun. So we also filmed another part of that film uh, just last year. Um, the first part was about four years ago. And then, uh, then we filmed another part with Carla because we come in, in, in the, the longer version of this film, we wake Galen up who was passed out because um, uh, Rush hits him, it, it accidentally hits him when they're dancing. And so we filmed the section that comes after that, which is the three of us dancing at, at Split Rock. So, and then um, the other pieces are, we're doing a haunted house uh, piece, uh, sort of haunted house vampire piece. Uh, we're, um, and that's um, all based on um, creepy Victorian um, rhymes uh, and uh, has a sort of Tim Burton-esque feel to it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we also are working on a film version of French Twist, uh, which will be condensed into a short film too. And what else, anything else that we have shot yet? Then there's other sections of the film that will be the, the glue that keeps it all together. I have but a question, I, think, I have a yes. question. Have you ever done your perform your um, performed live before your film, meaning um, in front of your films? So, for example, I'm watching your film on the big screen, and then you guys make the film come alive. Well, it, it's interesting that you should ask. Um, we, it we actually I'm used, a little psychic, you know. Yeah, we actually <laughs> used the um, the the kitchen scene uh, from Cacophony in our 25th anniversary um, performance of French Twist. So what happened is Peter, Peter runs in and um, he's been chased by, um, by the, the person in French Twist who, who played my old part, a mime, who he accidentally slaps and she chases him. And so he runs into the, into the club and um, runs to the, to the kitchen and then I, as the owner of the club, say, um, uh, let's, we, let's look at what's happening in the kitchen in our hidden camera. And a screen comes down and all of a sudden we, we see the, the kitchen piece on, um, in, uh, on stage in, in its film version. And then oh, we cool. back again. Yeah, it was really fun. And then at the end, we pulled the, pulled the screen down and Peter and the other chefs from the piece emerge with, um, with uh, food, with the, with the feast. So we, we, it's, it's, uh, this piece has had many, many different, uh, um, uh, versions, but we, but we also have done, as I said, Steve has done a number of shows, uh, um, video for a number of shows or, or film work for a number of shows that we've, uh, done over the years and dancing in front of, um, like, for example, we, we did a show called heaven, which is about the Bosnian war. Oh. Uh, at Park Square last year. And there's a scene where Steve's wife, Jan Campbell, who is also a founding member of the company, um, and Jeremy Ben Susan, um, who you haven't seen yet, um, uh, do a dance, a sort of a tango like dance uh, on the streets near St. Anthony, Maine. And it looks, you know, with the cobblestones and everything, it has a, has a sort of um, Balkan feel to it. And while they're dancing on the screen, they're also dancing in front of, in front of the, um, doing the same dance in front of that screen. Steve, when did you start in your career? What, when did you start uh, as in, in film, in doing multimedia in film? Um, well, let me see. I think uh, 82, that'd be 40 years. Uh, I started as a, a t-shirt designer when I got out of uh, college. I went to Hawkeye Tech in Waterloo, um, yeah. graduated from there oh, with well. my commercial art degree. and. Uh, the summer that I started working as a t-shirt designer, I saw a trailer for Tron and decided to pursue 3D animation. So I wound up with a job where I got into computer graphics uh, fairly early. I was starting computer graphics in 84. Um, and then in 87, I moved to the Twin Cities and then was a, primarily a 3D animator or paintbox, as they call paintbox artist for um, 
about 25 years. That's how I met Jan because Carl is now husband Tom uh, and I were working together. He was the guy that uh, sold the gear and the software. We became pretty good friends. And I met my wife at a software show, <laughs> believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so when, when, uh, they, when Jan was dancing and they were doing their initial stuff, they did this piece really early on that just floored me, uh, called Berserks. It's about, uh, it's about the, the Norse warriors that die and then come back, um, to fight again. And it's a really, really striking piece. And I knew at that point, uh, I wanted to be involved somehow. I literally bought my first video camera so I could film, um, the show Milner that they did in, uh, in 95, um, which I also created a, a three minute, like a propaganda film in my, in my study. I, yeah, I was able to sort of put something together with my very first computer. And then um, I've filmed most of Joe's shows um, since then. And I uh, have also created uh, films that have been in them, a lot of the stuff that I did in Heaven. And then there was a lot of stuff that I did for Between Fire and Ice, which is a show that I did in 2005. Um, so, you know, I used my animation skills. And then eventually I started uh, turning from, I was doing a lot of photography kind of on the side. I got really interested in it. And then really always kind of wanted to be a filmmaker. Um, and the tools and stuff just got to the point where I could start doing my own. Um, I work for Mayo Clinic as a, as a motion graphics art director. I work a lot around a lot of great editors and other people that shoot. And I just sort of picked it up, I guess. And then Joe's films to give me a chance to sort of see what I could do with it. Um, I know that, uh, the first, first camera I bought for, um, uh, for Mjolnir, uh, back in, in 95 was this sharp view cam that had a screen on the back of it. This is really early for that. And. I just kind of went gonzo gorilla filmmaker with it. Um, Joe allowed me to be on stage while they were doing the practice stuff. And I would get right up in his face with the camera and uh, shoot crazy angles and that kind of stuff. And I think that's where we really started to see a lot of possibilities maybe together. I mean, um, he's a, he's a fearless director. Um, it allows me to sort of be a fearless filmmaker at times and, and it works out pretty well. Um, and they're always kind of challenging. You know, I, I will say that when we shot Split Rock Light, uh, underneath Split Rock Lighthouse, um, and that was our first thing together, the crew was just us. Uh, there was no, I, I was the shooter. We had, we really had no lights. Um, we didn't really have anything. And uh, I will tell you, it's a very challenging place to shoot because it's uh, like it rocks and it's uneven. And then we had to deal with fog rolling in or out and we had to get shots at times where we could see the lighthouse you know so they there's a dance battle that's supposed to take place underneath the lighthouse and the fog would roll in and we had to wait until the fog cleared but i will tell you that uh uh the footage that we got in a split rock lighthouse is some of the most beautiful stuff ever shot i mean if you thought cacophony looked good um split the split rock lighthouse stuff uh, split rock shuffle looks amazing yeah that's one of the yeah one of the next ones to be done. But um, yeah, we had wet, major weather problems both for both shoots. We had two days of shooting up there uh, with two years apart. And yeah. the first time it was fog all day and sort of cold, you know, and people in just t-shirts, um, yeah. th- which just made beautiful for beautiful uh, scenes. But like Steve said, we, we'd watch that fog and go, okay, it's coming, it's yeah. coming. It's coming. Okay, go. <laughs> and then exciting part of it. <laughs> hey, Carla, it's... Carla, tell us about Carla. Tell us about your career. How'd you meet? How did? First of all, I love, I love you guys that because you're you've been this history together, and it's and it shows in your film. It's, it's yeah. so cool about your company. It's really well, cool. It's been my privilege to dance with Joe in the Flying Foot Forum for thirty years, and. What I love about the work as a performer is the way that it blends all the skills that I had ever (laughs) learned to any degree. It's really a jack of all trades kind of company. I use my jazz dance, my ballet, my tap dance, my uh, whatever singing or playing any instruments or. And you're funny. And acting. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Um, but it makes it a very intuitive kind of work to do. Like training doesn't necessarily help you. You have to be able to just roll with it. Um, 
and it really it really is a tribute to Joe's unique and singular vision. I think he has, when you were talking about the style of the movie, that is really um, a piece of everything he does. And sometimes we joke and call him the little red hand because we'll do a show and he's written the script, he's composed the music, he's done the lyrics, he's made the choreography, he's made the costumes, he's done the sets. Um, and that really gives it, I think, that, that unique singular vision yeah. um that is so beautiful and and really the hallmark for flying food forum and all of our works in these 30 years have really been on stage which means the minute they're done and the show yeah. is over the audience is done clapping it's disappeared right. so i'm really pleased to see that um joe and steve are doing the work to find a way to keep these dances give them a framework and help them to live so other generations um, can see what we did. It's so true, Carla. It's uh, I've talked to, with a couple other filmmakers and cast and crew about that very issue about power of film, the history of you know what we can do with it. And we performers, we theater performers. I, I'm been a theater performer my whole life. Most of our work has been done, and nobody, nobody other than if you if you weren't at the performance, you did not see it massive works of art it's yeah. true because yeah. of copyright issues and um it's one of the beauties of it it's one of the sacred things about it um but it's also tragic right and so <laughs> it really is and so we're really lucky to live in this day and age where it's successful for film um giants of the earth heritage center the producer are in spring grove um our mission is to is to keep history to preserve current history and so that's why i wanted to do a film festival because what better Thing to preserve history than film and art film and that's why we have so many art categories in our festival um, because we need to preserve our art it's so important it's the most important thing we have as humans because other other than you know we creating things we're just animals right so thanks for bringing that up Carla. you yeah. i really wanted to say that i almost i i voted you and now i hope no one else gets mad at me but i don't feel like that i love everybody otherwise i wouldn't do this but you are you were one of my favorite actresses i know you're a dancer oh, yeah. but you, you're, you're a very good actress thank um, you uh and it takes a lot and when i say that um to be a really in my eyes to be a really great actress you have to be extremely well-rounded and that's what you you totally did you're like you. oh you're like side eye. i'm like oh my god she's <laughs> funny it's the lit it's the little part in the film the person that steals the film it's the little it's the little thing you know, that makes a great actress. It's not all, and, and particularly with cacophony because it's not a, a full blown you know, talk script to, to Joe's hilarious way of doing this kind of, you know, kind of talking and, and, and sort of throwing these different accents. And, um, I just wanted to tell you that of all the, I was just like, ah, kind of. Oh, thank you. Yeah. One thing I'd also like to really say about the work is you're getting a chance to see the comic side of Flying Foot Forum. But Flying Foot Forum really uses rhythm as a language and it has, um, it can apply it to, we've done many serious pieces. We've done a piece about the Bosnian conflicts in the 1990s called Heaven. We've done more um, theater dance music as well as um, concert dance performances. Um, so this kind of work that Joe has created is very versatile and very powerful. It can explore universal themes and create characters and tell stories. Um, so I hope that some of our films in the future will uh, get to hold some of the more serious work as well too, because it's very powerful. I just want to say too that, you know, all four of us here, we've worked together for years and years and years. And, and just, um, as you said, I think it shows in, in, in the work. Um, and there's just, um, um, we just have such a good history of working together and, and, and um, creating together. And everybody, you know, everybody here and everybody who's ever been in the Flying Foot Forum has had um, a major role to play in what it is. And I think that's um, something that's uh, sometimes unique in, in companies. Spoken like a humble leader, Joe. Spoken like a hu humble leader. That's wonderful. Hey, Peter. Yes. Tell us about you. Tell us about you. Well, I am a percussionist, a composer, um, and I am attracted to the unusual. So 
my association with uh, Flying Foot Farm was a natural fit with that. Um, so um, I, I like to compose uh, unusual pieces and unusual, uh, I like to compose for unusual sounds and um, and, and I'm just intrigued whenever, whenever something is unusual, I find myself very intrigued. Um, I, I become less interested in performing or creating in forms that have uh, become more common. And so I, I really enjoy being original uh, or at least trying to be original and uh, performing music that is uh, original. You I've feel like with... you're serving a population of people to bring something new? Is that what your passion is? I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. Yes. What is it? Yeah, you're serving, yeah. We, we also, we're only ever passionate about something and good at it if, we, if we're actually serving somebody in something. Yeah. So you, your, your audience is the, the people that uh, don't like typical. That yes, that, that would be correct. Mm -hmm. That's very I much so. That just from what, what I've seen. I can't wait to see you guys in person. Go away, COVID. Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> Hello, yeah. vaccine. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Bring that vaccine on. Bring that vaccine on. Do something about a vaccine. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is, we live in dark, crazy times, right? But we have to make it, we have to somehow keep our, keep our, our wits about us. And we have, there's, there's a reason all this stuff is happening. And so think of all the amazing art that people are creating with with the downtime hopefully um, well I think we've got plenty of stuff to edit for the winter so that will keep us busy so can i just say can i say something about peter um it, what i love about peter's work is it's really unusual but really um there's always a way in for people whether they've seen anything like that before or not and i think that's what's really interesting about peter's work is that um you know he does this amazing um uh what would you call the the a vocal piece you have a oh, special yeah that's what i was gonna say too i would i would label it as percussive breath work percussive breath work and it's just so intriguing you watch me just stands in a spotlight this was part of the percussion project but he does it you know for many many things can you give us a sample peter <laughs> sure um Go for it. these uh what i've done with flying foot forum is uh is an improvisation uh, a completely free imp improvisation. Mm. And so when I'm walking out on stage to do this, I have no idea how it's going to start. Wow. And so uh, right, right now, before I give you the example, I have no idea what I'm about to do. Cool. But let me do just a little, a little short ditty here. That was beautiful. Gorgeous. Yay. Could listen to that all day. My puppy, Lacey, approves. She's oh, like, oh, good. That, that was really cool. <laughs> That's really beautiful. Hard to speak, right? Just, I, that, I, I uh, founded an organization called Sacred Noise Society 25 years ago, and that's what sacred noise is. Hmm. Sacred noise. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what sacred noise is, verbatim. So I, I, I truly appreciate that. Gorgeous. Thank you. Hey, someone else talk. I can't speak now. <laughs> no, don't speak. Carla, tell us about something else. Tell us about Joe more. Or <laughs> Where do you start? <laughs> um, he is really a, a master of all trades. Um, if there is beautiful paint, you can see just a little bit of the background behind him. Uh, yeah, for cool. examples of his style. If you were to, to get a tour from his house, you would think you were on a set of an amazing 
artist. Um, he's just has a unique artistic approach to every part of his life and his art. He is one of the most humble people that I've worked with, um, which makes him a good collaborator. He makes it a really safe and comfortable place to bring um, yourself and your ideas. He really thinks about the art in a, a really 4D full circle way with many different aspects. It's never just dance or just theater or just music or right. just play writing they, they really integrate together in a way that I haven't really seen very many other companies do. No. Um, Can I talk about Carla? Car Carla I also um, has probably more than anyone else has tr uh, done choreography for the company as well. There's a beautiful piece that I bet you would love for Giants of the Earth. Um, it's called um, All of One Size and it's, I, it's just this gorgeous piece about what, maybe Carla can talk about it, but it's, 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 it would be um, really nice to film it down in Southern Minnesota, which is where Carla spent her early years, right? Near, in Fairmont. And- um, Welcome, and actually welcome is where my grandma was from. So it's been a lot of time, Huntley and, Huntley and Welcome were the two small towns where my grandmothers lived, okay. uh, both very close to Fairmont. I know what welcome is. Yeah, and I've made a couple of pieces uh, that are inspired by my grandparents and inspired by just the countryside and the feeling. I even Ooh, made a little I love that video. Idea. I, I for love Hope that Chest. idea. I love that idea of for giants that Joe, you're you're absolutely correct uh, because we do family histories. We film family histories, and I would love to film you talking about your family history. In Southern Minnesota. Sure, That's and a great idea. I we did a piece hope chest that includes a lot of family photographs uh, and video from uh, uh, Truman and Welcome in Southern Minnesota. Oh, you should totally come. You should totally, totally come do that. Well, sure. We should, we should, we should try to, to. Write, to get a grant to do that for for you. That it's really part of our mission and very, and we so need dance in the world and storytelling dance. We so. Well, there's a reason that dance was in our film festival because it's my favorite thing. You know, yeah. it's just as an artist, it's, you know, it's my, yeah, you're right, Joe, I would love that. Good call. Yeah. Very intuitive of you. True. We have a, we, we have a whole branch of the, of the work that is based in folk and folk music and, and, um, and Carla's I done saw a, a couple of your, one looked very Irish. I saw, it, I think it was you dancing and you're wearing a vest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's beautiful. That was very probably. Folk probably under the trees. And then yeah. um, and th there's just a whole sort of branch of flying foot form that's completely different than cacophony. And Carla has been a very big contributor to that um, part of the work. And Carla and I have worked together, uh, choreographed together. We did a piece called uh, The Circus of Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which was based on that speech from Macbeth. And it was just this crazy, crazy wild piece. Um, uh, sort of surreal and um, Fellini-esque, I would say. Um, but uh, but we did that one together and we've done a number of things together. So um, so she also is a very uh, um, uh, wonderful choreographer and um, creator of uh, um, beautiful work um, and we'll be doing many more. But I think we filmed that one too, Steve. I haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even said, said that I think we should do that. I love, yeah. I love the choreography, um, Justin Cacophony, but it reminds me of just, aesthetically even though we're talking you know, it's funny and it's stylistic it's very accessible in the sense that you don't know that you're watching this genius choreography because it doesn't look as just you know ballet just has ballet looks or you know jazz just says jazz looks but it's a subtle kind of mixture of sophisticated dance i get it i get it i'm a fan you know good cool. <laughs> isn't dora duncan and i are like old soulmates okay so I, I love a beautiful, simple dance yes. that speaks to a higher, you know, idea. Um, so it, that's a lovely thing. Yeah, well, well, we need you in Southern Minnesota. We need you in New York and in Sheboygan, where I am today. And we need you in Minneapolis. And we need you in Atlanta and Paris and all over the world. And that's why film is such a wonderful thing. Um, 
and we can collaborate now in film, which is even cooler. Thank God. The one good thing COVID made the world do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the one, it's the, it's the one thing that we decided to, you know, the world sat us down because maybe we needed to be sat down. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, Peter? Did we need to be sat down? Um, I, I, it's always a good time to reevaluate and, um, and, and just examine uh, what you've been doing. Uh, I think we all get so busy into the details of our life and even uh, our art that it's, it's always really great to just take a step back mm -hmm. and, and ask yourself, why are you doing this? And, mm -hmm. and reevaluate. What is the purpose? Yeah. What is the purpose? Have you guys sat down and powwowed about what your purpose is? I mean, you just exude your purpose, but have you done that as a group? As a team? Ever? Well, I don't know that we have. You know, we, I think definitely when we ha we're working on a piece together, we do. Like when Carla and Peter and I decided to put the percussive percussion project together, um, we, we talked about how we would do that and, you know, came up with everyone will do a duet with everyone else, which comes to uh -huh. how many duets? Two, three duets, is it? So everybody would do it. So Carla and Peter did a duet, Carla and I did a duet, and I, Peter and I did a duet. And then, um, and then we just kept adding on to, you know, what, what, are, what are some other things? And I said, I wanted to do a piece based on, um, on these uh, creepy Victorian rhymes. And so that's how I saw Esau came, came about. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, so definitely when we're working on a piece together, we, we do that. Um, but, and Carla and I, you know, we sort of, we run the company together. We have a lot of uh, meetings and talking about, um, mm -hmm. you know, where we're going and what we're doing, why we're doing it, um, all the, that sort of thing. Um, Every grant you write <laughs> makes you, yeah. makes you exactly. come to Jesus and figure out what you're doing and why. So I'd say there is a lot of that that goes yeah. into it. Yeah. How many company members have you had considered over the last 30 years? How many oh my God. different, um, what's, what's, your, what's your estimate? Oh, that's a lot. It was a lot. It's a lot. We've had, you know, uh, we've had, we have, we've always had kind of a core of people, which now yeah. I would say Charles who couldn't make it today, the skinny guy with the goatee. Yeah. Um, Charles, uh, uh, Carla, Jan, who's uh, Steve's wife. Um, Jan, Jan and Carla are the two uh, founding members, three, me, Jan, Carla and me were the three founding members. Um, and then uh, um, Molly Stoltz and um, Jeremy, Jeremy Ben Sassan. Um, but there are other uh, people that have been with us over long periods of time. Um, Brian Evans and God, I'm- Rush, Rush Benson. Rush Benson, um, who also, uh, what's wonderful to see those two created a percussive dance um, for one of our, our shows. And it's wonderful to see people take this concept that I feel we sort of started with Flying Foot Forum and then run with it and do something something different and something that adds to the, to the sort of um, uh, envelope of what Flying Foot Forum does. So, um, but I, you know, I would say at least 70, I would say probably over a hundred people in the various, just having alone was 25 people, um, I think. Yeah. And that that's, and the other thing is, you know, People like Peter, uh, we don't just have musicians who sit on the edge of the stage and, and play. We, we incorporate them into the show and they become, you know, uh, an integral part of the whole collaboration. So, you know, Heaven was 25 people on stage um, and we've done a number of shows that are almost that big. So it's got to be at least 100, if not two, don't you think? For our 10 year anniversary, I made a family tree with the, and the ground was all the the. Um, crew and artistic designers and then the tree and the branches were the original company and people who had come in to replace them and i think if we did a 30-year family tree it would be like the burning bush it would be huge um and i i think 100 is i think there's probably even more if we count everybody who participated in a show because we we use the term company loosely if you're in a yeah. show with us you're in the company Right. Um, yep. But we do yep. we do usually have a smaller core that's um that's in everything. Well, when you have when you do a show with somebody, you're forever you're forever connected to them. Yeah. So yes, you are that's in the true. company. You never you never don't have that. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's one of the reasons I think we all do it. You know, it's it's 
there's a bond between artists who perform live on stage that, you know, what can you say? It's yeah. just there. You can't undo it. Well, thank God. Mm -hmm. I think it's even more so for flying foot form because so often like a, a theater company will rehearse for six weeks and put up a show where we might work for two years on a show before we mount it. And that's a lot of time to and making something original um, also requires a different kind of investment. Uh, totally and true. Community. Totally true. Yeah. That's that's a that's a really good point. I, I, I come from a background. I do tons of original stuff. So it's very true to do original work is not the same thing as putting up West Side Story. Right. And that, yeah, because you, you, you know, you originated this character. You, this is your music. This is your, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's very, very true. Well, God bless all of you. And I hope that you forever create, and I'm sure you probably will. It's not, it's not the thing that we want to do. It's the thing that we have to do that keeps us going. And it certainly shows in your work. And, um, I could talk to you all day. Please, please come to Spring Grove. Please come and be a part of our family tree because you already are. You're already in our archives and in our, we, do you know we have the largest family tree in probably for, I don't, I, I, I hate to brag how big it is. I didn't do it. So I take no credit, but Spring Grove has an amazing, amazing family tree. And it's not just people that are from there. It's people that stop in in spring grove and, and and become a part of it and that's that's what giants of the earth is so cool it's been so my so my pleasure to um to speak with you hello from everyone at giants of the earth and spring grove and from across the world and please come and be in our film festival again next year hopefully we can have you in person and maybe perform yes. live we would love that so much it's going to be the last weekend in august and we're all, I'm already planning it, so. We would love to come. Yes, yep. well, we would love to have you. So please be in touch. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being in our film festival and for your wonderful, wonderful art that you gave us to watch. Thank you for all your beautiful work. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Katie. You're welcome, bye Joan. See you later. Bye. Bye. So is... So, so are we all visit <laughs> yeah oh we were so disappointed we couldn't come this this year but um next year for sure i know i know joe i know next year for